Welcome to the Gospel Truth Show produced by Cross and Crown Radio. We want to make a lasting difference in your life and in our community. Our mission is to produce biblical, entertaining, and Christ-centered programs for God's people and folks all around the world. Post a comment or a question and sit back and enjoy the show. GospelTruthShow.Podbeam.com Hello, this is Mike Robinson with Cross and Crown Radio, and you've joined the Gospel Truth Podcast. We're so glad that you're with us. We had a great topic today, the providence of God. We're going to see how God's providential hand has worked in history, and specifically in America, and even George Washington. We're going to see an incredible facts and, and, and powerful historical proof on why we know that God had birthed America. But first, if you can, subscribe to our channel. It's right there on YouTube. If you could do that, if you're at the Facebook page, go to YouTube and subscribe. Give us a comment, thumbs up. It really, really helps. But we're glad that you're with us. Here's what the Bible says about God's providence. Psalm 103, verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all. That's what it says. Acts chapter 17 says this. And he, that's God, made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and their boundaries of their habitation. <coughs> First Chronicles 29 says this in verse 11. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and the earth, yours is dominion, O Lord, and you exalt yourself head over all. That's what the Word says. Romans 8, 28, a very familiar passage with a lot of us, says this. And we know, we know that God causes all things to work together for good, for those who love God, to those who are called according, notice this, to His purpose. And I like Proverbs 3, 6, where it says, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. So you got to start with God. You want to have a good life, got to start with God. Uh, the Westminster Confession of Faith says it this way. God, the great creator of all things, does uphold, direct, dispose, and govern all creatures, all actions, all things, for the greatest, even the least, by his most wise and holy providence. I love that. His wise and holy providence. We're going to be talking about that. Now, the birth of America. Now, notice, America is the greatest country in the world. Imagine if that was Iran or Saudi Arabia. If they were the greatest country in the world, with the Wahhabis... In Saudi Arabia, ruling the world with all the nukes? Wow. Or Iran with all the, the mullahs and the Shiite religion? Imagine if they ruled the world, there probably wouldn't be any world. So thank God that he chose America, a predominantly Christian nation built upon Christian principles mainly, and even now has the majority of the population Bible-professing Christians. Now, how, how the Revolutionary War, there was certain providential acts that occurred that are astounding, that make you think, whoa, God's hand was in it. At Bunker Hill, after the shot heard around the world was fire in Lexington, thousands of American, Americans began pouring in from all areas around Boston, loosely under the command of General Ward. The next morning, General Gage decided to launch a frontal attack on their position. As the British troops crossed on barges from Boston, the British general called for the Navy to send a ship to the Mystic River, where they could bombard the American position from that side. Surprisingly, though, even though the British Navy had been operating around Boston for more than six months, they had failed to chart th this particular river, so they didn't know this river, and were unable to bombard it effectually. There's one part. In addition, the land cannons brought across from Boston were unable to do any effectual damage, and it was too late to send for new supplies, and the British general discovered that the wrong size cannon balls had been purchased. Imagine that. And although the Americans lost the battle at Bunker Hill, it was a real stunning psychological victory for them because of the problems that the British Army had that I just recounted. For the first time in history, untrained militia had stood up against a trained army of Great Britain and held them off. Now, there's another one in Boston. As the American army moved to free Boston for the British occupation, there was evidence of God's providence in that. Dominating Boston shipping channels and waterfront, it seemed an obvious place for the British to occupy. But after close analysis, General Howe determined 
that no American would attack this quarter, and so they didn't put their heavy bombardments there. Because they did not fortify this position, when they had the opportunity, the Americans were able to move and capture the heavy weapons from a British fort to command Boston. On the night chosen by the Americans to build up their fortifications, God created the perfect weather. Here it goes. The perfect weather condition under his providence for the American victory. While the frozen ground, most of the time would be hard for digging, which you would not want normally, but it was great for travel and bringing those heavy weapons across. If it was real soft, it would be harder, but it was hard from that. So to prevent it mad, mud from impending, impeding, excuse me, the movement of their heavy weapons. So it's easy to move their heavy weapons because of the ground. In addition, extensive ground fog came and hid the American movement. So here comes the fog. And so it hid the, the sounds and the sights of the American army. They remained hid so that they could win that victory. Amazing. Now, how about the leader? We'll get into more in the future on the providential care of God in the Revolutionary War. There's so many. It's just, it's amazing. But George Washington, think about him. You know, 20-some years before the Revolutionary War, here's a General George Washington, and not a general at that point. He's fighting in the, the Indian-French War, and in 1755, an American chief looked at the soldiers, and they started shooting them. And almost all the soldiers died at that time, except for one soldier, George Washington. A thousand of the 1,400-plus British soldiers were killed at that point or wounded but not George Washington. Now, what they had was this tall guy, this tall uh, officer, George Washington, on a horse, and the chief commanded that the warriors fire their rifles at that guy. And round after round was fired at this man. Twice the officer's horse was shot out from under him. That's Washington. Twice he grabbed the horse, left idle from a fellow officer that was shot down and got on. 10, 12, 13 rounds were fired by sharpshooters from the enemies. Still, the officer remained unwounded. He never got touched. The native warriors stared at him in disbelief. Their rifles seldom missed the mark, but they kept missing and missing and missing this particular officer, George Washington. The chief suddenly realized that a power must be shielding this man, so he said, stop firing. This one is under the special protection of the Great Spirit. And so they stopped firing at this. After, as the firing slowed, Washington gathered the remaining troops and they led to a, a retreat into safety. Now, this is 20 years before the Revolutionary War. So Washington serving under the British. That evening, as the last man who was wounded was cared for, the officer noticed an odd tear in his coat. It was a bullet hole. He took his coat off. He saw bullet hole after bullet hole in there. Nine days after the battle, having heard the rumor of his own death, he wrote his brother to confirm that he was still alive, even though he should have been dead because of all the bullet holes in his coat, but not one hit him. If it wasn't for that, George Washington would not have led the American Revolution, and we would not have had the United States of America. This is Pastor Mike Robinson. Until next time, may God bless you. Thanks for joining us at Life Church today. It's our joy to play a role in all God is doing in and through your life. We would love to continue with you on that journey. If you have any questions or prayer requests, visit lifechurchtoday.com or email us. We offer free counseling and a free Bible school because we train numerous people into ministry. Use your talents and answer God's call. God wants to do so much for you and through you. If you would like to give, click the donation button on the site. Pastor Robinson's 40 books are on Amazon.